Hello everyone, it's Brandon here from the Pilot Stud channel. May I just say it's fantastic to see you here today. In today's video, I'm talking about replay tools. I'm going back to the default replay tool in Microsoft Flight Simulator and giving a concise tutorial on how to use it as well as explaining some of the main features. It's not perfect, so I use something different. I use Sky Dolly and I'll also be talking about that in the later stages of this video. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Now hello from the ground, we're in an A320 here and you will notice it's the default one. This is because Microsoft Flight Simulator's default replay tool, at least at the moment, doesn't work very well with any add-on aircraft. So for the sake of the video, I've had to downgrade significantly and that's why we're in this wonderful aircraft. Now replay tool will appear in your toolbar up here. We can't see it at the moment as we haven't got it enabled. In order to enable it on PC, which is the only platform you can use it on at the moment. We've got to head into our options menu, general options, down to experimental and then turn on replay tool via the top bar here. Once you've done that make sure you click apply and save and hey presto you'll now have access to replay tool via the top toolbar. So step one complete, that's how you access replay mode or replay tool, whatever you like to call it. Now there's four main segments here, sequence recording, timeline controls, camera track recording and load and save. Basically everything else you can ignore. Sequence recording is the hub, this is where you're going to start and end your recordings. Now for some unknown reason, Asobo have complicated this system more than they need to. Sequence recording will record both your aircraft movement and your camera movement. This means upon initially watching your recording back, you'll notice that you'll have no control of your camera. This is why camera track exists down here. Camera track allows you to make another recording on top of the aircraft recording and in this camera track recording you'll have the ability to move your camera around in any way you see fit whether that be around the cockpit outside or using the drone camera in my opinion that makes the process a lot more convoluted than it has to be but it does have its purposes finally the two other bits I need to talk about timeline controls sort of self-explanatory that will allow you to watch back your recording timeline and this slider here will allow you to slide through the recording quite nicely. Load and save allows you to save and load up your recordings and their associated camera tracks. Now that I've gave a brief summary, let me give a good example. To start recording, you need to click the recording button up here. Once you've done that, every single aircraft movement will be recorded by the simulator, as well as the position of your camera. Let me just show you what I mean there. So I'm going to move my camera all the way to the right side of the cockpit, and all the way to the left side of the cockpit. This will make sense in a few minutes. Now that I know Microsoft Flight Simulator is recording, I can close this down by clicking the cross up here and take off as normal. Do be aware, I don't use this A320 at all, probably not for the last two years or so, so I, my flying might not be too good. And we have also got a very strong headwind here at London Stansted Airport today, gusting up to 30 knots, which is great fun to fly in in real life in a Cessna 152 earlier today. <laughs> Let's just take off. We'll go Togo because I can't be bothered to do anything else. And there we go, we can pull back now. Okay, we've got a positive rate of climb so gear can come up. Lovely old job. And now we can head back into replay tool and click the stop button and this will stop recording. Now once you click stop recording I would recommend you pause your simulator by pressing active pause so your aircraft doesn't crash in the background. Normally if I was doing a recording I would fly a whole flight so by this point I'd be parked up at a gate but if not make sure you click some sort of pause button. Now to watch your replay back, all you need to do is press play and that will take you straight back to the start. It is as easy as that for the basic functionality. It means we'll be able to watch our aircraft spool up and travel along the runway and take off. Now I spoke about cameras and as you can see, cameras are moving exactly how I moved them two minutes or so ago. 
it also means I have no control. So I can't go into an external view right now at all. I've got no control over my cameras. All I can do is sit back and watch how I took off a moment ago. Now for good or bad, you might like that feature, but personally I don't. I prefer to always have movement over my cameras. But you can see quite nicely, flaps just coming down there, but regrettably they have left my gear up. So it's not perfect by any means, although our gear is showing down on the gear indicator there. Now we've got a minute in, you can hear our engines spool up and the aircraft will travel along the runway just as we intended. So yippee, we've got the first bit done. But how do we move our cameras about? I want to look outside. I want to be able to record how close I got to the runway, whether or not I hit the runway in a tail strike. Of course, this is vitally important when you're looking at your landings. You want to see how smooth it is. Well, it is pretty easy to record new camera movement. I'd recommend going back to the start, and you can do that by pressing pause and then dragging all the way back to the start. And then all you need to do is click camera track recording. And this means you've got full movement of your cameras. So if I head outside to drone mode, I should really assign that with a hotkey. You can now see I can move around my aircraft. All I need to do now is click play. And now as my aircraft moves, I'll have total control of my cameras. Now regrettably, here's another oversight by the Sobo. You've got no way to actually speed up through your recording, so it does mean you're going to have to wait to record a new camera track. In my opinion, that's slightly annoying, and the freeware alternative provides a way around that. Okay, so our engines are now spooling up, and we have complete control over our camera movement. For good or bad, I'm a bit jerky on the old camera at the moment. It means we can spin around just like that, and it looks pretty cool. And there we go, you can see our aircraft taking off. It looks very cool, admittedly. Hopefully that gear will come up. Okay, so now we've finished the replay. All you need to do is press stop, and hopefully, if it all worked out, track two will have successfully recorded, and now you'll be able to scroll through and as you can see, our camera movement matches up completely to what we just did there. So you can watch that wonderful takeoff again. It's a much more complex feature than it needs to be, but hey, I guess it does work. You can see our aircraft lifting off the runway there. The one bonus point to this feature does mean that you can swap between what you recorded in the cockpit and what you recorded after quite nicely. So we can swap over to track one and you can see we head back to the cockpit seeing everything we saw five or so minutes ago. And on that note there is Microsoft Flight Simulator's default replay tool. It's not the best but it works. Load and save are relatively self-explanatory. Click save as and your Windows File Explorer will open and it will allow you to save your JSON replay file wherever you like, wherever you see fit. It's by no means the best bit of replay tool software I've ever seen but it does work and it works especially well with the default aircraft. Sadly, not too well with add-on aircraft. I'm now going to briefly swap over to Sky Dolly, which is the freeware solution I use. Okay, so if you aren't too impressed with Microsoft Flight Simulator's default replay tool, I'm going to recommend Sky Dolly. You can see it on the screen, it is so easy to use. You download it and install like any other .exe, you run it, you click record and you fly. This doesn't have anything to do with camera tracks. Don't get me wrong, it's got some awesome features. You can do stuff with formations, you can change the speed, you can even port yourself and teleport yourself to other airports around the world. But speaking about it as an easy to use replay tool, it is ridiculously good. It's freeware, it's no messing about, it is so easy. And to be honest, I need to make another full-blown video on it. Now here I am flying the X-Cub here at Duxford Aerodrome, a wonderful historic World War II airfield. I don't fly the X-Cub very well, simply because I don't ever fly tail draggers, but I thought it would be a good example just to show how good this add-on is. Um, with, of course, a takeoff and a very quick landing. Ouch, that's got to hurt. Anyway, you just stop recording by heading back into the application and pressing the red record button, and then you can scrub through, move your camera around however you see fit. It is ridiculously easy, and I do nothing but recommend it. It is a wonderful add-on, 
and credit to the developer, he's done a superb job. Just look how easy it is. On that note guys, thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, taking a look at Microsoft Flight Simulator's default replay tool and a fantastic freeware alternative. I'll see you on another Pilot Stud video, have a good one, bye bye.